Peace. My name is Sifu William Blackwell of Virginia Beach, Wing Chun. Today, I'm going to be describing Silim Tao. Silim Tao is the first form of Wing Chun. Wing Chun has three empty hand forms, one wind dummy form, a pole form, and a knife form. Silim Tao translates loosely as little idea, little imagination, or little thinking. What it means is that we don't necessarily fight with the form. The form gives us the structure, the ideas, and the concepts that we use to develop in, to drill the techniques that we use for the fighting. Today, I'm going to go over Silim Tao, teach you some basics on how to execute it according to the low man cam lineage. Usually, we would take a couple of weeks to develop everything out over time. So because this is a condensed video, Please take the time, rewind back to certain parts, replay certain parts of it to get an understanding and the feeling of it. There's no need to rush through the whole thing at one time. Take your time with it, learn how to develop it, and I hope you do enjoy it. Remember that when you're doing the form, it's a little idea or a little imagination. So allow yourself to formulate a sentence structure in your head. Tell yourself everything that you're doing as you're doing the form. Stand up tall, relax. Bring your hands up, bend at your knees, open your heels, open your toes, open your heels, Push your hips forward. Your shoulders are back and your feet are formed into a triangle. Somewhere in front of you, your toes will eventually touch out in front of you. You bring your hands up, bend your knees. You notice that when I bend my knees, my front hollows out 
my balance isn't complete right now, so I complete it. I move my heels out, my toes, and my heels. My balance is still going forward. So what I have to do is push my hips forward and lean my shoulders back, nail my balance is back, activate. So my heels, I'm just keeping my shoulders are over my toes, and my center of balance, center of gravity is now in the middle of my body. And I'm stable again from here. After getting into the horse, you want to begin with your first hand. Bring your hands down across in front of you at a 45 degree angle going out. One hand over the other. You want your left hand over top of the right hand. Turn your hands over and then lift your hands up. You'll notice that my hands are in at a 90 degree angle, but they're out another 45 degrees out. And my fingertips are above my head. After doing this, relax your arms down and pull up back into the fist. Next is the punch. So pushing from your elbow, you always start with your left hand. Every time you do a technique, you always start with your left hand. Push your arm, allowing your shoulder to sink, push with your elbow, rub your shirt until your wrist gets across the center. So again, you rub your shirt, pushing from the elbow, and as soon as your wrist crosses the center, you start to punch forward until your bottom knuckles are chin level, about this high. From this position, you want to open the palm with the palm facing up, making sure that your wrist is in the middle of your body. Bring your hand up, keeping your elbow locked out straight. Bring your hand up as far as you can bring it, and then rotate inboard until your palm is facing forward. Keeping the wrist in the center of your body. Grab, pull down, and pull back up. You do the same thing from the other side. So you bring your fist to the center and punch fist level, excuse me, chin level. Bring the arm flat to the floor, keeping the wrist in the center, keeping the elbow locked straight out, rotate the hand, grab and pull down. Next is Tansa. Open the left hand and relax the shoulder again, pushing from the elbow, pushing your hand forward. As soon as your wrist comes to the center, you wanna do the same thing and push forward. You wanna push until you got one fist distance between your elbow and your body. From here, roll the wrist up, point the fingers down, and using your wrist as the action point, chop down. Pull the hand up as you pull back using your elbow. Continue to pull back, straight back with your elbow. You'll notice that the bottom of my palm is at the top of my knuckles and my wrist is still in the center of my body. From here, I go to Fuxa. So I drop my hand down. My thumb is touching my pointer finger and my other fingers are relaxed down. The back of my palm is facing forward and my wrist is still at the center. I want to tighten up my wrist right here. And I act as if something is pulling my wrist forward at the same time, something is pushing my elbow forward, moving me along a straight line in front of me. And again, I want to give that same distance, a fist distance between my elbow and my body. And one thing I, I fail to mention is that when you're looking at a clock, you want to have your 
hand pointing down at approximately a five degree angle towards five o'clock. When you come up with your full saw, open your hand up again. Rotate the wrist, fingers pointing down, and chop with the wrist. Bring your hand back up and pull back. When you pull it back, pull with the elbow. Don't bring your hand back like this right here because that's defeating the main idea of this and the feeling that you want to get and the energy you want to use. You want to pull back with your elbow the entire way. Rub your shirt when you get back and have one fist distance away from your body when you're done. You're going to drop back down to your fuxal and push forward again, keeping the wrist tight, all in small nuances. Bring the elbow in as far as you can until you go forward. Open the hand, roll the wrist, chop with the wrist. Bring the hand up and pull back. You would do this fuxal three times. Pushing forward, keeping this nice and tight, keeping the elbow in. Pulling back. After the third fuxal, you want to relax your hand. And with this relaxation, you want to use your arm to push, but tighten up your palm and pop your hand. When you do that, be sure to go straight to the side. Don't go up, don't go down, don't go out this way or in this way, but go straight to the side. And you're in, in this position. When you're done, relax the hand, bring it back to the center, and then push straight forward. Palm facing forward, fingertips pointing up, turn your hand over, Roll your wrist into Huan Sao, grab and pull. And you repeat the same action with your right hand. You'll push forward with your Tan Sao. This is a slow movement. Don't be in any rush to complete it. Pull your hand back. This is the first fuxal. Roll your wrist, chop with the wrist, bring your hand up, pull it back. Continue to pull with your elbow. This is the second fuxal. Push straight, open the hand, roll the wrist, chop with the wrist, Pull it up, pull back with the elbow, all the way to your fist distance from your body. Come down to Fuxal, push forward. Nice and slow. Chop at the wrist, come back. Wrist stays in the center the entire time. Relax my hand, pop. Come back to the center, forward. Huan Sao, keeping the wrist in the center. Grab and pull. To begin the second section of Sinem Tile, open your left hand, face the palm down, and push down along the side of your body. Please be mindful that you want to keep your thumb on your body and push straight down to the side. So as you push one side down, then you push the other side down. Pause for a moment. You're going to smartly bring the hands up 
to the small of your back until your fingertips are pointing right to the top of your, your pants line to the small of your back, keeping your wrist bent. The same way that we executed this action, you're gonna do it going backwards. So you're gonna pop your wrist going down at a 45 degree angle. Pause. Bring your hands up, right here to the front of your hips. And what you wanna have is this part of your wrist touching the front of your hip bones, so resting on your hip bones. You pause right here for a second. After you pause here, you push down at a 45 degree angle, the same angle that you came to here. So you're starting to see that in the form, you're replicating similarities. From here, you pause. Next, you want to let the hands relax. The hands are gonna relax and you open your arms up and out. When I go up and out, I'm not pulling my arm backwards. I'm more so just letting it go up and out along the same plane right here. So I open my arms up and out until they get to about eye level. When I get to eye level, then I'm going to pull my elbow down as I bend my elbow in at the same time. I'm gonna do that with both hands. And I want my left hand over top of my right hand. The idea with this is that I don't want to pull in and then push down. I don't want to go down and then pull in. I want to pull at an angle, because if I can pull you off at an angle, I can steal your balance away from you. That's the idea and concept that we want to try to feel. So let me do it again. Your arms go up and out, and then you bend your elbows as you pull your elbow down. Left hand over right hand. Raise your arms up about shoulder level, and you're gonna push with your elbow first. Use your elbow power first, because it's closer to the fulcrum, so you have more power you're generating. So you're gonna push out with your elbows and extend your arms right beside you. Not low, not high, but just level. And repeat the same thing. So you wanna go back out again, and this time when you come down, you want your right hand over the left hand. Pause. Bring the left hand on the inside. And as you do this, the idea is that you want to drop the elbow and at the same time cover your head. In order to do that, find an axle point in your arm to where my arm stays on this pivot point the whole time. This can be a little tricky, so take your time to play with this. Take your time to play with all of the, all of the hands that we're doing. If something's not comfortable, keep working on it. Go back to that one hand until you get it right. So both hands move at the same time and my fingertips are over my head and my elbows was, were coming down. And now I wanna bring my hands down into a chop. From this position, I want to open my palms up facing upward. When I do that, I wanna act like my hands are almost like magnets. So as soon as my hands open up, I start to form a circle that's going around the shape of my torso. And I'm gonna bring my hands back together again and then pull back. Let me show you this from the angle. So my hands form into a ball, and as soon as my hands touch, I bring my arm back. And as you notice, I formed a straight line. I wanna use the straight line again, so I'm gonna follow back on that same straight line, going back towards my eye level. And my fingertips are separated this time. From here, I want to pro face the palms going out, pull my arms down to the same level, bend my wrist, and come back up. Grab, pull down, and pull my fist back.
to begin the third section of Selim Tau, from point A to what's going to be point B, you want to open your hand as you push outward at a 45 degree angle with this palm strike. And then mind you, I'm going forward and out. So I'm going at a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to bring my hand, my hand back, my wrist in the center. And when I go forward, I'm going to turn my hand with my fingertips pointing outboard. The idea and the feeling for this is you're hitting someone up under their chin. Level your hand, point out, keeping the wrist in the center, grab and pull. Go out at a 45 degree angle, come back, palm strike forward with the fingertips facing outboard, flatten the arm, point out, grab, pull down. Next will be my tonsils and gonsils. So have the idea of the center line the whole time we go over this aspect. I'm going to open my hand up and my wrist is going to cover the center line and then go back out. As I'm doing this, I'm going out at a 45 degree angle still, a little bit out at a 45 degree angle, and my fingers are still covering the top of my head, but I'm gonna make sure I curve around, corkscrew around the center of my body. Let's give this number one. I'm gonna bring my hand down on the center line and come to here. It's the same position from the first section. This is number two. I'm gonna go back across the center, out and forward. That's number three. So number one and number three are the same. For number four, I'm gonna cross the center line and I'm gonna come all the way down to the side of my body. And number five, I'm gonna come back up to the same as one and three. Let me do that with the other hand just to give time for it to digest. So I cross the center line, Corpse going forward and up. Number one, let me go down to the center. Number two, go back across the center. Number three, go across the center. Number four, go back across the center, up and out for number five. I'm gonna do it all the way again, and I'm gonna finish this time with the transition. So I cross the center for number one, Come down on the center for number two, cross the center for number three, cross the center going down for number four, cross the center going back up for number five. For number for the last piece, I'm going to bend my wrist and pull my elbow in at the same time. It's almost like somebody got a string right here on the end of my elbow, and when they pull it, my wrist bends and it comes in at the same time. When I get here, I'm going to go down all the way around to my fingertips are pointing upward and I palm strike out the same little pop. The idea with this is that when you do the palm strike, think about your arm as being a, a handsaw and it's a piece of wood underneath your arm. When you try to cut something, if you go flat across the surface, You'll be there all day trying to saw it and get a grip into it. But if you go down at an angle and stay stuck into it, then you have more power over top of that object. And don't fully extend your arm because you're trying to seal something under your arm. After you do that, flatten the arm out, points out. Cross the center, go out. Come back on the center, cross the center, cross the center, cross the center again, come down, pop, straighten the arm, points out. Next is bonsai. So imagine that you're gonna wipe your eyes. So you bring your hand up, and this finger, this knuckle should be by your eye. Your middle knuckle should be by your eye. And you're just going to push forward. When you push forward, you want your shoulder and your elbow to be level. 
You want your wrist to be above, excuse me, your wrist below your elbow, and you want your hands nice and loose. Let's do the other side. Bring your hand up, push forward, and this is the straight line going forward. This is the diagonal line going down. And also, you notice that my hand is out, my arm is out at a 45 degree angle. Let's do it again with the completion piece. Just like we did before, find somewhat of an axle, a pivot point in your arm. You're gonna pull your elbow down, allowing your hand to cover your head. Continue to pull your arm down until your palm is facing up like a time sign. From here, you're gonna bend your wrist with your fingertips pointing down. The same thing we did before, just pop, going forward down at an angle. Straighten your arm out, point out, and pull back up. Come up to your bottom side, push it forward, bring your elbow down while you're covering your head, bring your arm down, bend your wrist, pop forward, Straighten your arm, coin side. On to the closing. You want to bring one arm, excuse me, your left arm down first. Same way across your body. You want to work on a push and pull idea that we have. So you're going to go smartly down across your arm. As soon as you make contact, you're going to turn both of your wrists at the same time pulling your left arm, pushing your right arm. You want to create some friction with your arms. Try this several times when you first learn, get the hang of it. So you're pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling with your elbow. So for the form, you're going to go extend your arm, push and pull one time, two times, three times. I want to complete my action so my hand is still open as if I'm going to do it again, but I'm not. I'm going to bring my fist up, my wrist in the center, and I'm going to do the push and pull idea again, but this time with the punch. So I'm going to push this punch and pull this fist back. That's one punch. And when I punch, I'm going to push over my arms. So I want to always have positive control of the center of my body. So let's do the complete closing. One, two, three. Bring my hand up. One, two. Third time, pull your fist all the way back. One side. When you grab and pull, when your arm goes back, your left arm, your left leg comes into your right leg. So you grab and pull and step together and then push your hands down. That concludes Southern Tom.
Now that we have reviewed Selim Tao according to the low man cam lineage, I hope you can understand some of the previous videos that we did and the ones we're gonna go forward with. By understanding the Selim Tao, you can understand how we do some of our structure, how we form our bodies, some of our movements, some of our ideas and concepts because we pull from the form to inform us of how we use our Wing Chun. A lot of what we do comes out of the first form. So it's important to take your time to learn it, to go back, to review it. And if you need to, take your time on certain parts, pause, go back, and work on each little small element. Because ideally, we would want to stress this training out over the course of a few weeks so that you can get a full understanding of it and when you move forward, you have basic building blocks going forward. So next week, Sifu Evans is gonna be reviewing the spring arm. Thank you for joining this video. We hope you enjoyed it. For more information, please visit us at vbwingtun.com. Stay focused, stay strong, stay trained. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Peace.